All right, we're back with another episode of Wine for the People. My name is Noah. If you have not watched this part of the show, or at least this segment of the show, this is where we dive deep into some of the more uh, scary things about wine, whether it be varieties. Uh, but today we're actually gonna talk about a structural component of wine. And that's one that I think a lot of people get quite scared of, and that is tannin. It's an integral part of many wines around the world, both red and also the occasional white. It can help a grape variety from turning into a simple quaffer into a wine with a long life that can be otherworldly when given the patience it requires. So let's get into the primary part of what the hell are tannins? We're gonna get pretty geeky here as tannins are chemical compounds that we in the biz call phenolics. Now, there are a stack of different phenols in wine that naturally occur. There are hundreds, but for brevity's sake, let's just talk about the two that matter. Flavonoids and non-flavonoids. Non-flavonoids are actually compounds that don't add flavor to the wine, and flavonoids are the ones that do. And that's where tannin fits, among anthocyanins, where wine actually gets its color from. Tannin exists most prominently in the skins and seeds of grapes. So next time you're at the supermarket, grab a red grape and chew on the skin for a while. It might actually remind you when you try a very, very tannic wine. This is basically because wines that are high in tannin are generally fermented on their skins for extended periods, which extracts the phenolics and from the skins of the grapes and imparts it onto the juice, adding both color and tannin to the liquid. For winemakers, controlling that level of tannin is important for a few reasons. One is for stylistic purposes. Even those who are lovers of tannin, the Nebbiolo enthusiasts, the Bordeaux collectors, even you guys can appreciate that tannic wines are not inherently easy to drink, which is the point. If you're a winemaker wanting to craft a bright, easy drinking style of red, you'll want to mitigate your levels of tannin in the wine, so limiting skin contact is important and how much pumping over you do is very important, and also when you do it. So pumping over is basically a cellar hand's least favorite job. It's time consuming, mind numbing. It's where you make sure the skins actually stay in contact with the juice during fermentation by pumping the wine from the bottom of the tank over the top of the cap, which is where all the grapes rise to the surface. And that's, you do that to make sure that the wine doesn't smell like nail polish remover, but this is also where you actually extract the most color and tannin to the wines. So the more pumping over you do later in the fermentation, the more tannins you actually extract. This can also be done in smaller vessels manually without a pump called punching down or pigeage. Uh, and if you want further tannin, you can actually keep doing this post-fermentation and extend the time on skins, which is commonly practiced on varieties like Nebbiolo and Cabernet Sauvignon. Another thing that actually gives wine tannin is oak. Yes, tannins exist in woods and oak is not exempt from this, which is why maybe you've had an oaky white wine like a Chardonnay doesn't have much skin contact and you'll have felt a slight grip on the palate. That will be oak derived tannin. So that's how it gets there. What does it actually feel like? Well, that really depends on how much tannin is in your wine. What variety is it made from? So for example, Pinot Noir, generally speaking, has modest levels of tannin. When you drink it, you'll notice it, but it's very smooth and velvety. In contrast, something like Sangiovese is known for firm, grippy, and high levels in tannin that suck all of the moisture from your mouth, which doesn't sound that pleasant, does it? But it gives a wine both a rich, full body, but it also gives it an extended ability to age. Wine age, or, or at least the changing flavor of wine as it ages, is actually affected by gradual influence of oxygen. Over time in bottle, the wine will slowly begin to oxidize. Oxidization, when winemaking can be really challenging, but if it's controlled slowly, it can actually give a wine a lot of complexity. So tannin's actually an antioxidant, which controls the intake of oxygen over time to gently affect it. And this is why most tannic wines in your Bordeaux and Barolos are the ones that you keep in your cellar for the longest. Gradually, tannin will actually fall out of the wine. Physically, it's why really old wines has that sediment and the resultant wine will actually taste a lot smoother likely when it did when it was first bottled. So if you're really keen on trying wines that exhibit the difference in tannin, grab a bottle of that light style Pinot Noir from a new world country and then try it next to like a proper Nebbiolo, like maybe like a Barbaresco if you're willing to wear the price tag. But also don't forget skin contact with white wines. Try a nice Riesling next to a skin contact Italian wine. And you can really see the, both a difference in color derived from tannin and also the texture too. Uh, and that'll be it. Uh, that's a little crash course on tannin. Do you guys like tannic wines? Do you prefer wines that are just easy, breezy, don't have any kind of grip? Or do you love a wine that you can actually keep onto for a long period of time? You actually like that svelvety kind of corduroy, firm tannin that kind of you get from those more Northern Italian varieties. That will about be it from us. And we'll see you guys soon. Thank you.